Russia launched more than 3,500 strikes across the front line using different types of weapons, including multiple rocket systems in Ukraine's Kharkiv and Donetsk regions on Friday, the general staff of Ukrainian armed forces said in its briefing on Saturday. In total, over the past day, Russian troops launched three missile strikes and 101 airstrikes on Ukrainian positions and populated areas, in particular, using seven missiles and 70 guided aerial bombs, and carried out more than 3,500 strikes, 89 of them using multiple launch rocket system, it added. As many as 101 combat engagements were recorded on the front lines in the past day. Battles are continuing in Vovchansk in northern Kharkiv region where Russians lost 136 soldiers there in the past day, the general staff said. Some 36 Russian trenches and an ammunition depot were hit in this area of the front line. Situation is also tense in Kupiansk in the same region as well as in Kramatorsk and Lyman in eastern Donetsk region. Russian armed forces lost 1,210 servicemen during hostilities in the past 24 hours, brining the total number of Russia's casualties to 517,290, the general staff said. Russia also suffered heavy losses in terms of military equipment. Ukraine's defense forces destroyed nine Russian tanks, nine armored fighting vehicles, 36 artillery systems, one anti-aircraft warfare system, seven cruise missiles, 59 tactical unmanned aerial systems, 68 vehicles and fuel tankers, 10 pieces of special equipment during the battles on Friday. Risk of conflict between Russia and NATO members grows, Putin starts a more dangerous game. As the war with Russia continues, the Joe Biden administration is taking greater risks to support Ukraine. The latest example is the White House's decision to allow Ukrainian forces to use American weapons to strike targets inside Russia. We may also soon see NATO representatives on the territory of Ukraine who will train fighters, writes Time. It is noted that six months ago, Western leaders were not ready to discuss any of these changes, at least publicly. But Russia's recent victories on the battlefield and the West's tougher attitude toward Vladimir Putin have begun to blur those red lines. Russian troops have begun to advance along the war's long fronts and are once again threatening Kharkov, which lies near the Russian border. It is impossible to defend Kharkov indefinitely without returning fire on targets across the border. Also, fears of further Russian military advances this summer have Western leaders worried that Ukraine could lose the war unless they take immediate and decisive action. Biden also decided that most of Putin's threats of retaliation were not credible. After making repeated threats against NATO countries in response to various acts of perceived aggression and even warnings about the possibility of Russian use of nuclear weapons, Putin has taken very few actions that could provoke a wider war. This may be partly due to the fact that Washington seems to have expressed its red lines to Russia, journalists emphasize. Biden is also taking more risks with Russia because he wants to avoid the impression that he is doing less than European allies, the authorities say. Finally, after 27 months of war, with no truly dangerous escalation to a conflict that would pit NATO and Russia nose to nose, risk tolerance is growing as the war drags on. We can also expect news, perhaps at the NATO summit in Washington next month, about a Western security pact with Ukraine. While it would not be the automatic mutual defense commitment that comes with NATO membership, it would likely reaffirm long-term commitments to Ukraine and formalize a process that would speed up the approval of weapons and other assistance. However, there is a real and growing risk of conflict between Russia and the US and other NATO members. Western leaders cannot expect Putin to sit idly by when all his bluffs are called. He is not about to launch a frontal attack on a NATO country, but the risk of increasingly aggressive and destructive Russian cyber attacks is growing and the Kremlin may find other ways to make life difficult in NATO countries.
There is also the obvious risk that Ukraine could use Western weapons in attacks that target Russian civilians, and Russian strikes in Ukraine may kill NATO trainers. Any of these scenarios will lead to further escalation. The article says, The authors add that there are growing dangers that could dramatically and unexpectedly raise the stakes in this conflict.